Oftentimes, we treat our pets like family, and family should have a proper bed. If you want to see how I made their bed, stay tuned. My wife had picked up a fabric foam dog bed at a pet supply store. I got some measurements off of it, then I could design the bed to go around it. But then I realized I didn't measure the dogs to see if they'd fit in the bed. And it looks like they'll fit. The measurements that I had gotten off the bed were inside dimensions of the box that I was going to build. A lot of people don't know how to calculate what the lengths of the board are going to be based on the interior dimensions. If you're cutting it at 45 degrees on the ends, that creates a right triangle. The thickness of your wood, in my case three quarters of an inch, makes up one leg of the triangle, and then the other leg of the triangle is also going to be three quarters of an inch. So you take your interior dimensions plus three quarters of an inch on one end, three quarters of an inch on the other end, and you add that to your interior dimension. In my case, my interior dimension was 20 inches. You add that inch and a half and you end up with 21 and a half inches for your overall outside length. Once I was armed with that information, I could head over to the miter saw, set my miter saw to a 45 degree bevel, and cut 45 degrees on one of the ends of the pieces that I would started with. Having my dimension of 21 and a half inches for the long side, I could then cut two pieces to length. Once I had all my pieces cut, I could then take my front piece and mark out for a section that was going to be removed so the dogs could get in and out of the bed a little bit easier. I just picked an angle that looked good on my T-bevel, marked it, rounded some of the corners, then I took it over to the bandsaw and cut it out, leaving the line. I could then clean up the rough saw marks over at the belt sander. Assembly could now begin with me getting out my strap clamp, dry fitting the pieces, removing them one by one and adding glue at the miters. I then threw a few one and a half inch brad nails in at the corners and used a cabinet scraper to clean up some of the glue squeeze out on the inside. Once I had it out of the clamps, I just test fit the bed to make sure that it would fit. Then I cut a few pieces of scrap that I had lying around to act as supports to the hardboard I was going to add later on the bottom. I toyed around with leg design ideas, trying to include the cutoff pieces from last week's project, but I didn't quite like the look. After a quick check in my scrap bin, I found some 3 quarter inch MDF, then I was just going to make some tapered corner legs. Once again, just kind of picking an angle that looked nice, marking it out and cutting the piece over at the miter saw. I cut four pieces at this size, and then I cut an additional four pieces, the thickness of the material, in my case three quarters of an inch, less in width. That way when they formed a corner, the reveal on either side would be the same. Here you can see that one piece of the corner is a little bit narrower than the other. I then just applied some glue to the narrower piece, and then face nailed the larger piece to it. Then just cleaned up the glue with a damp rag. I then off camera with a sophisticated tool such as my finger, applied some drywall joint compound to some of the knots, some of the miters, and some of the surfaces that I could then sand down and make nice and smooth and be ready for paint. I then marked each corner piece at one inches in, applied some glue, and then used some one and a quarter inch brad nails to secure it from the inside while the glue had dried. Glue and brad nails are just fine in my case considering collectively my dogs don't weigh over 10 pounds. Then I took those scrap pieces I cut earlier, made sure that they were the same height as the leg pieces, and then just brad nailed them in place. That was going to act as a support for the hardboard I was going to add momentarily. I'm not sure if many of you know this, but I'm not very good at picking out paint colors, and I tend to opt for black because, well, I always have it readily available. But to me, for whatever reason, black on pine just kind of gives a little bit of an elegant look. I also cut a quarter inch piece of hardboard to a little bit smaller than the inside dimensions, painted it black, and then it could just sit in place. Our four-legged friends seem to like it, a pint-sized puppy pad. If you want to build one for your dog, you can go to nickferry.com and I have a full detailed write-up on it. I didn't include plans, however, because, well, 
different sized dogs, different sized bed. Until next time, I'll see you later. A proprietary posh princess puppy pad. Pa-pow! I think we're done.